books include Wall Street, which again is sort of a, a, a perfect, perfect book to read. I was just thumbing through it the other day for this moment we're in. And After the New Economy, and he's working on a study of the current American ruling class, and he's a contributing editor to our fine magazine, The Nation. Doug. Oh, thank you, Chris. And I, I just remembered that I, uh, I first made your acquaintance in print uh, reading a piece you wrote about the use of uh, debt as an organizing, oh, the, the possible organizing potential of, uh, of organizing around debt. Uh, and uh, um, I think that you wrote that in these times some years ago, and I was very impressed with that idea. And it occurs, uh, it has new cur currency right now, so let's maybe revive that idea. Uh, is the end nigh? Mm, I don't know. We, I just want to remind us that uh, we've been here many times before and securities fraud and uh, financial panics are as American as apple pie. So I don't know uh, just how different uh, the present moment is from these many that have happened in the past. But I do want to talk about how we got to this particular moment and uh, how we might get out of here and what it all means. A long-term issue is uh, the, uh, the tremendous polarization of incomes that's gone on in uh, the last 30 years or so, uh, which means that lower and middle-class people have to borrow uh, to maintain the semblance of a middle-class standard of living, uh, but then the rich also have plenty of spare money uh, that they need to uh, invest profitably, and uh, lending it to those below them on the income ladder is a great, uh, has been at least, a great outlet until uh, so many of them started defaulting, but uh, that uh, is uh, one of the long-term issues behind uh, the present uh, crisis we're in. But the proximate cause, as they say in law, is that uh, we had a housing bubble. And uh, as is always the case with bubbles, you can't have a good bubble without easy credit and lots of it. Uh, and uh, so the bust really now has two dimensions. The effects on household finances, people owe money on houses that are falling in value. And uh, on the other side, uh, the financial system uh, is holding an awful lot of loans that are now sour. Uh, so we've got two sides to that problem, uh, which are combining to produce a gigantic crisis. But, and this is important, it's not just a matter of simple loans on the uh, financial side. There's a big change. Banks no longer hold loans to maturity. Uh, they package them, securitize them, sell them to institutional investors. So they get distributed all over the place. Uh, and not only that, uh, but uh, uh, the... Uh, Finest minds on Wall Street took those loans and uh, sliced them and diced them and assembled them to lovely gratins of all kinds of, uh, uh, baked into single dishes. Some of them layers are, are very fine loans, uh, some of the layers are middle quality loans, and some of them are really sour loans. And uh, the problem is that nobody knows uh, what, uh, what mix is in which uh, dishes, and so uh, everyone is very, very afraid. Uh, this has uh, resulted in uh, that the credit system has largely frozen up. Uh, banks, uh, nobody wants to do business with banks because they're afraid they won't see the money again. Uh, so uh, the interbank lending market has virtually ceased to exist. Now, this is, uh, um, may sound abstract, but it actually is uh, very, very important. Now, financial markets sometimes dance to their own tune. Uh, the stock market is especially, uh, has an especially tangential relationship with reality. But the credit markets are very, very important to the real world. And let me just list a couple of the ways that's true. First of all, households. Uh, consumers, uh, households borrow a lot. Even in better times, they would be borrowing uh, to pay for cars, uh, credit cards, uh, mortgages to buy houses. Uh, I was actually shocked to discover today that the mortgage volume uh, was over $1 trillion uh, during 19, uh, 2005, the peak of the housing bubble. Uh, and the second quarter of this year, it's down to $80 billion at its uh, annual rate. That's a decline of 95% in mortgage lending. So something very, very dramatic has happened in that market. Uh, businesses also need to borrow, not just uh, um, recklessly, but also just to finance day-to-day -day activity. Retailers need to buy inventory. Uh, manufacturers need to buy raw materials. Uh, uh, large companies borrow in the commercial paper market, uh, unsecured short-term debt. Uh, that market is completely frozen up, and uh, that is shrinking very rapidly. Uh, and even longer-term bank, commercial, and industrial lending, uh, has, uh, is, is, uh, which had picked up some of the slack when the commercial paper market imploded, that is now also beginning to shrink. So uh, the business lending, which is really the lifeblood of day-to-day -day, uh, economic activity, is, uh, is, is really seizing up. And then, uh, finally, governments, uh, not the federal government is uh, borrowing very heavily and having no problem selling its bonds so far, but states like Massachusetts and California are finding it very difficult to uh, borrow, uh, just routine short-term borrowing. Uh, governments get, you know, tax payments, big quarterly tax payments, big annual tax payments, and they have to borrow to tie them over uh, between those large lumps of, of, of receipts. Uh, and uh, the states are having a hard time doing that borrowing now. 
uh, county and city governments are having very similar problems, and we're likely to see the largest municipal bankruptcy in American history very soon, a uh, county in Alabama that, uh, where Birmingham is, uh, which will, I think, be about twice the size of the Orange County bankruptcy of about 10 years ago. So uh, this is having real-world effects, and when governments can't borrow, they have to cut services and lay people off. So this is very, very real uh, stuff here. Uh, now, this is, about, this is a credit crunch. One minute. One minute. This is a credit crunch. That's not about the price of credit, the interest rate, but the availability of it. Uh, so I've heard several responses to this. Uh, that, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Let me just deal with a couple of them. And I, since I have only a minute, I will speak very quickly. I've heard several people say it's a hoax. No, it's not. The credit freeze is not like WMDs in Iraq. It's visible in real stats that are quoted daily. <laughs> Weekly or even quoted in real time on Bloomberg terminals around the world if you have $1,200 a month for your own. Uh, people say it's their problem, but it's ours too, uh, for the reasons I just outlined. Some people say let it all, let it all fall down. I say that's not politics, that's nihilism. Uh, there's a temptation to echo what Edmund Wilson said after the 29 crash. One couldn't help be, but being exhilarated at the sudden unexpected collapse of that stupid gigantic fraud. But the unemployment rate hit 25% in 1933. I don't think we want to see a rerun of that, or maybe some people do, but not me. Uh, other people have said that the, uh, the bailout package is the wrong approach. What we need is debt relief, infrastructure spending, green jobs. All those things are true and very, very good, and I want to see them too. But they're very slow, very complicated, and sad to say there's not all that much popular support for it right now. That may change, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a walk in the woods uh, getting that kind of program enacted. It's another complaint that it's all a giveaway to the bankers. Yes, that's true to some degree, but without it, we're all cooked, and uh, we can change that uh, maybe someday if we have a better government. Um, and uh, the latest uh, complaint is that it hasn't worked. It's only been in existence for a week, and they haven't spent any money yet, and these things take years uh, to work through, so uh, it's, we should be a little more patient than that. But we can do it better, and let me start with the realistic ways and then ascend towards the dreamy. Uh, first of all, equity infusions. That is, the government should buy stock in the banks uh, in return, and then, uh, it, rather than asset purchases. There's a study by some IMF economists that looked at scores of banking crises around the world, and they found that equity infusions, recapitalizing the banks, are a much more effective way of dealing with this than buying bad assets and trying to sell them. Uh, now, also, financing it. Yes, it's a giveaway to the bankers now, but there's plenty of money at the top of this society. The top 10% of the population has 45% of the income. The top 1% about 16%. The top 1% has about $2 trillion in income. And we don't have to take it all at once, but we can take bits of it <laughs> over the course of several years. Uh, debt relief. Now, the IMF uh, study also showed that debt relief is an important part of any kind of, of, of getting out of any kind of financial crisis. So this is an instance in which economic efficiency and social justice coincide. So that is an important uh, demand to make. Re-regulate the financial system. Yes, we need to do that, but it's very hard to think about exactly how to do that. The financial system is so sprawling and complicated and global and interconnected, we can't even begin to think about that. That's a project that's going to take a long time, but it has to be done so we don't have a rerun of this nonsense, uh, you know, five or ten years down the road. And then on the equity issue, Paulson is likely to take a passive stake. You know, just two weeks ago, we weren't even talking about uh, uh, the, the government taking... Uh, uh, equity interest in banks and buying stock, injecting capital directly into the banks. Uh, now we are, and it's likely to happen perhaps as soon as next week. We may have been nationalizing the banks the week after next, who knows. But Paulson wants this to be a passive stake, non-voting shares. Why is that? And this is where my dreaming really begins. If we're going to nationalize them, why not control them as well, and not just uh, give them a blank check to run things as, as, they, as they were? Uh, or, short of that, why not regulate them like utilities, or the way we did we used to run, uh, regulate utilities before the preposterous experiment in uh, utility deregulation began? Uh, we could uh, create all kinds of, uh, out of the wreckage, we could create all kinds of new economic development institutions, uh, nonprofit, cooperative, locally owned, whatever. Uh, we can create institutions that provide low cost financial services for people now who are fleeced by check cashing services and payday lenders. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities. We just have to start thinking about these things. Right? We need, and we need to think about the details. These are very vague and, and uh, they need some flesh on those bones. Uh, and finally, uh, just a few words on the politics of the moment. People are talking about the end of neoliberalism. Maybe so, but I see a lot more continuity between neoliberalism and the 400 years of capitalism that went before it than some other people do. But that aside, there's an idea popular among the left, right, and center that neoliberalism, that means that the state got out of the economy. 
The state never got out of the economy. Markets are not the state of nature. They need to be established and maintained by state power. The nature of that state and what it does is what matters. The more benign functions of the state have been taken out, uh, like supporting people, the kinds of things that Fran was talking about, but the, uh, the, the more malignant kinds, uh, uh, the policing functions have been expanded, and of course the bailout functions have been greatly expanded. There is an ideological opening. You can say that markets are not self-regulating and they tend to eat themselves if left to their own devices. And with the state getting so explicitly involved in rescuing the mess that the finance brought on itself and us, there's an opportunity to push things in a better direction. But we're pretty weak right now, and I'm really not all sh that sure who we are, so we have to think about what kinds of demands we can make, because who are we? <laughs> so next